All right, Gus, why, why don't you take this intro? <clears throat> What's that? You you want me to? You, you're gonna let me? Why don't do Wendy's? you do the intro for this one? That I mean, thank, thank you for off. that. That sounds kind of that sounds a little condescending. Go though, for it, I'm, buddy. You got this I, one. I, okay, again, I feel like you're talking to like the kid that gets put into the last Five, twenty seconds. Four of the three. Okay, two. Uh, sh- uh, Go, hey, no, thank. Keep going. Come in here. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Gus and Eddie podcast you, episode. You said I was going to... Oh, what? We don't keep episode numbers. What right? episode number are we on? 200 by now? No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, well, I've been in quarantine so long. I know we were reaching 100 before I left, but I think we figure we're probably by two by now. So this is, I think this is quarantine episode three, right? That's correct. Yes. And uh, I think somebody said that we had passed 69 with our first podcast episode so we're maybe we're in the 70s now i don't know i don't know gus i just don't even know is it my job to know things about our job no we don't have jobs eddie we have activities that people accidentally pay us for yeah whoops you paid us sorry (laughs) psych got you (laughs) Um, dude eddie you're gonna be stoked to hear real quick though we started recording this exactly at 4 20 p.m so with that being said Let's freaking go. Okay? Hell yeah, dude. One thing is, uh, I, this is actually, I, I should have maybe even just asked in private, but for moral questions, just of what do you think too, is like, I was going to relaunch my merch and I just, I don't, I can't ask people to pay for merch right now. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, dude, that's that's a good point. I, I was actually planning on holding off myself too. I'm not going to be throwing some stuff up for some time. Where I'm, I appreciate it. I'm sure some people are like, no, we want the merch back and we want to buy it. But it's like, I just can't be like, pay me money right now. It just feels yeah. so, so wrong. Exactly. And and off that point too, I actually had, uh, uh, by the time this episode goes up, my my Pastor Copeland uh, commentary video will be up too. And I have a Raycon ad slot uh, at the end of that one too. And uh, I say it in the ad read at the end, but but like I said on the podcast too, like I I don't even care if like this is kind of weird for the company to hear too. Uh, I I signed a few deals to do ad slots like even a few months ago throughout the rest of this year, and I have some ads lined up that I'm contractually obligated to do. I'm going to be doing some charity things on my channel. I don't know what that's going to look like, and I'm going to be using a portion of that sponsorship money. But at the same time, like I, you know, it feels weird to just sell shit to people right now. Yeah, so I feel like sponsorships ha- are a little bit different though, because it's like if yeah. people. I think people get it with sponsorships. It's kind of just keep the ship running. But like yeah, merch totally. seems like a direct like pay me, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I and I was I was happy too. I and I, I put in the the thing there too because I just want to cover my bases and be extra sure. And I just was like, listen, guys, like buy your essential shit right now. You need food, you need water, do that. But if you got a little bit of extra money and you're looking to buy this product anyway, boom, you know? Yeah, real quick. No, I'm I'm glad you brought that up though. What's up? Um, just got uh, if you could stall for a second, just got a text from my dad asking if I can talk on the phone. Nothing serious. I just got to tell him we're. Oh, doing absolutely. The podcast. If cool, yeah, absolutely. If you need to dip out at all, too. Um, guys, just a little update on our end here. Um, so Sabrina and I again are feeling just fine. Uh, we've been largely in asymptomatic now for over ten days. Uh, we've been quarantined here for I don't know the exact day amount. It's been over two weeks. Um, the outside toast is still alive and going strong. If you don't know what I'm talking about every day, I've been this, like the day that we got up here, uh, Sabrina burned toast. It's not a big deal. I burned more toast than she probably has, but, but because it was smoking everywhere, she put it out on the little windowsill out there. And, uh, I just, every day I've been documenting the outside toast. It is now broken into three pieces, but it's still there and it's not growing mold. So I'm daily chronicling the outside toast journey. I think as of recording this today is day 19. So if you, if you have absolutely nothing better to do, go to my Instagram and look at some fucking soggy toast every day. All right. Toast updates. That's the type of exciting quarantine content you can get from Gus Johnson. (laughs) Welcome back, baby. Dude, I am. I think we're all like just losing our minds a bit. <laughs> That's the thing. I am kind of like, losing it. Yeah. Dude, I didn't realize. I thought I loved not doing things, and now I realized I don't like not doing things. <laughs> I yeah. really like doing things, especially traveling. And I want to. Oh, yeah. I'm homesick, dude. I want to see my gosh darn family. 
Dude, I, I feel the exact same way, honestly. I, I literally, like you, we don't know when the fuck we're going to see our families again. I ever. know I know for a fact that um, if this goes through the summer, I will have to go home in August because my sister is having a kid. So yeah. I, don't, I, I don't know how I'm going to do that. I don't know if driving is better or fly. You know what I mean? Because like the airport is like a collection of everybody from everywhere. But driving, you also interact with people. I don't fucking know what's happening. That's true. Uh, Sabrina and I have been talking about this and thinking too. And I had already planned to go home in the summer regardless. Mm. Um, I don't know if I told you officially. The the conflict that I had for VidCon also got canceled. No surprises there. Oh, you there. didn't tell me that. No. So, uh, of course, VidCon's down. But also the reason I was going to miss VidCon is down for all the people back there. Um, but... Uh, I, I already too, it's like, I want to see my family and, and you know, I want to, you know, be there. And it's just, if I'm back home, I can go outside. There's acres to like run and create mm-hmm. things yeah. It's better than being trapped in this tiny, tiny comp- uh, apartment. So depending on what the situation looks like months from now, if, if it's deemed safe at all, Sabrina and I will just get in her car and probably try to literally road trip all the way back there for, and stay there for just a couple weeks. Mm. Uh, cause I also don't really trust the airport stuff too. And you know, like Sabrina and I are way more likely to have had it. Now, I don't know if you saw today, William Osman uploaded a video. He and his wife definitely had it. Yeah. Yeah. I know his wife was, uh, like got tested, right? Yes. Yes. Um, so actually Sabrina has been talking to, uh, her nurses and stuff too. Tomorrow, uh, we have been, we have qualified to go in and to receive the drive through testing. So tomorrow morning we're going to go get in the car and go out and, and do the drive through testing nice. because we are advised that it's safe to do so from the doctors. Maybe we'll have more conclusive results then, but again, it's a day at a time. It's a week at a time. I don't know. I want to see my family in the summer. God damn yeah, it. You know, same dude. Oh man. Anyways, um, anyways, uh, let's talk about an- Animal Crossing. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Know, I actually do need to talk about Animal Crossing for a fucking moment. I'm sorry guys if you don't have the game, but everyone can understand <laughs> this. Okay. The Animal one thing I love about Animal Crossing it is it has the real life calendar. So when it's Easter in real life, it's Easter in Animal Crossing. It's called Bunny Day. In Animal Crossing, because they, you know, they want to avoid Jesus. Nintendo hates Christ, Jesus Christ. Thank you, dude. Christ does not exist in the Animal Crossing universe. Right. It's very clear. So in Animal Crossing, if you haven't played, you need, like, resources. So it's like, if you want to sell fish, you catch fish. If you want to chop wood, you get wood from the trees. And um, they decided for Easter to replace, I don't know the real math, but it seems like one-fifth to like two fifths of the time you get something like you're fishing or chopping wood. It's a fucking egg now. And the what? only thing that the eggs are used for is making egg furniture and egg clothing. And they're ugly. And so <laughs> now I'm trying to fish and I see the silhouette of a, a, a fish shaped thing that's swimming and moving and I catch it and I reel it in and it's an egg. It's just an egg. I hate that. At least make it an egg silhouette. That's so rude. Yeah, so I can skip it because I don't want egg shoes. That's not a joke. You can make egg shoes and it's just the decoration of an Easter egg um, as shoes. And so that's that's the kind of magic you can get instead of catching a red snapper and selling it for bells. That's dumb. Dude, I actually have, <laughs> because you told me about the egg situation, I haven't even played the game in two days because I was like, I'm going to wait for this egg shit to blow Dude, over. Dude, it blows over in two weeks. With it. So. <laughs> oh, two weeks? It's when, uh, or not, uh, probably a week, uh, a little over a week from now. So a week from the uh, this episode coming out, right? Because Easter is like a uh, yeah. week and a half away. Um, so Jesus yeah. did not die for this. This is fucking horse crap. <laughs> that's enough say. for the Animal Crossing talk. <laughs> yeah. Here's yeah, a, that's some dumb shit. My problem, though, is like normally we have a good deal of things that I can pull from, but I don't remember how many days I've been in the apartment for. So the only things that are happening oh, yeah. in my life are Animal Crossing eggs, and I'm editing a video, <laughs> and it's going okay. So that's about <laughs> how well I'm doing. 
<laughs> I think the only metric of measuring days at this point for myself is the outside toast, actually, too. <laughs> like, how many days have I been up here? I look at my Instagram story. Oh, today's outside toast day 19? All right, well, probably somewhere around there, give or take a day. So, I, one thing yeah, is, dude. some people are like, you know, they listen to the podcast and they're saying, like, during the quarantine, it's nice to, like, listen to, but I want to listen to our audience. I want to be alone here. You know what I mean? Like, I need, yeah. the, I need them making a podcast so I can listen to it. Please That's, show up at our door now. I'm sorry we said we'd stab you. <laughs> we no, so, we said don't. no, but now come to our... No, okay. I don't even Go ahead and do it. Yeah, don't fucking do that. You know there would be somebody that would do that. Not yeah. you, though. You guys are cool. You guys are chilling. Yeah, not home, you dude. listening to this. I'm sure we'd be best friends in real life. That's true. Just the three stupid people, statistically, again, they would do it. But not yeah. you guys. You're smart. Dude, again, like, I'm so sick I, I i i'm a homebody by nature you know and i'm yeah, still same. enjoying my evenings playing discord and chatting with the boys and shit like but but other than that dude it was right before this shit happened in like the the month and a half to two months leading up to it it i felt like i was just kind of starting to get some shit together again in terms of like changing up the the monotonous like oh i'm just at home just yeah we were going every night we were going out more we were going yeah. to do things and i was like wow we're actually doing stuff now when we first moved out here we were just staying in and playing video games and mm -hmm. then a pandemic hit. But obviously, obviously, this is the least of our worry. We're in a very fortunate position to be yeah, like, dude. okay. Dude, once I, once I hear that I'm healthy and I can't hurt other people and that the world is safe again, I'm going to go so balls to the wall. I'm going to like... <laughs> right to Hollywood Boulevard, Dave and Buster's. I'm going to deep throat one of the halo guns. I'm yeah, going to just dude. like cartwheel all over the machines. I'm going to be having the time of my I'm, life. I'm going to start sucking on arcade... Uh, uh, what are they fucking why am i free joysticks why did i take a Ooh. second my brain's breaking dude i don't know dude, what's I'm, happening anymore what is your sleep schedule looking like by the way it's all right i'm i'm staying i'm i feel like my sleep schedule was definitely better when we were making more stuff right before playlist right now mm -hmm. i'm like I, i'm staying up till like maybe 2 30 3 and sleeping until like 11 uh at the latest but no, yeah. most days it's usually like going to sleep at like one and waking up at maybe 10 Dude, exactly. I had it. I that is that is perfectly healthy for what we're doing. It's like I was I was so happy. I was getting to the point where I was honestly going to bed sometimes at midnight, if not one or two at the mm -hmm. latest, and I'd wake up by like eight or nine usually. And now it's like, dude, especially when I'm playing with like just so many different time zone boys too. Like uh, I'm I'm going to bed every night at like four thirty in the morning, and I'm waking mm. up at from ten to noon. I feel like ugh, I don't like doing that. Like yeah, but but also it's like the nighttime. This sounds so pathetic. It's like I am I am just counting down the hours till it's dark out every day. Where it's like oh, I suppose it'd make sense to maybe crack a brew and hop on to some games. You shit, know what's but. sad though. <laughs> What? Very, very pre-quarantine that used to be for, I would be daytime when after I'd upload a video and I'd be like, can't wait for it to get tonight so I can start gaming without guilt. <laughs> like that yeah, was I like, know. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's not the circumstances that have caused me to be that way. That was just the yeah. way I generally am. <laughs> um, do you want to hop into some preguntas already? I got to hear from our boys. Let's do it, guys. Let's hop into some preguntas. Oh, also, um, uh, there was a, t a tweet saying that Sven and Thor will be on. They're going to be on probably next week. We just had to, some technical difficulties, so we're going to continue on without those boys, but they will be on soon. Absolutely. Thank you for sending in your questions. Uh, we'll, we'll hear from them in a bit. Also, uh, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll get around to doing these bonus episodes. Sorry. It is It has been kind of hectic as we figured the shit out, but we'll start rolling those out. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, also, okay. if you're a um, uh, uh, YouTuber that we know and you happen to be listening to this and you're like, I want to call in, we should do that. Uh, Absolutely. There you go. Hit us up. Uh, so again, follow us on Twitter at Eddie Burback and at Gus Buckets, and we will fix. We'll, we'll be your at-home therapists right now. Oh, right? dude, I hope there's some quarantine disagreements. I'm sure people are ready to kill each other, and I'm ready to tell someone they're wrong. Dude, please send us your cabin fever shit. You want yes, to throw dude. your roommate out the window? Hell yeah! Um, here's a little. Here's a little tame one though. At physiological, dude, this is a fucking great username. It's spelled like the word fizzy and then illogical. Mm, at physiological, I like that. 
That's some wordplay, boy. I see that. Uh, Physiological says, My friend refuses to say please, thank you, or excuse me to strangers, saying that it is a waste of time and that they won't remember it later anyway. He also doesn't tip. I think it's incredibly rude, especially when it's a waiter or waitress. What are y'all thoughts? Dude, your friend's a sociopath. What the fuck? How is this even a question? Show him this. Oh, my God. If you, again, if you're not... It, we all disagree with the way that, that tipping is the responsibility of the customer to pay a living wage to a waiter. That being said, fucking tip waiters when they do a good job and even when they do a bad job. Tip them yes. still. Yes, it, I agree. The system is broken. The, the people should be paid fairly inherently. It shouldn't be on us. But... That's not what the system is. So in the meantime, don't fuck over service workers who are working their asses off for minimum wage. The only time I would ever consider not tipping someone is if they were like blatantly an asshole to me. You know what I mean? If they make a couple of mistakes, yeah, sure, you don't give them the fattiest tip in the world, but you still hit them with that 20%. You kidding me? Gotta get them. You You gotta get them, Are you joking? Uh, if anything, a punishment should be the ten to fifteen percent range. Range, mm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I've never. I've. That's. I will say fact about me. I've never not tipped uh, uh, somebody before. I know I've not tipped before. It's been maybe two or three times, and I distinctly remember it was like if if the people were like fighting me or like belittling. I remember one time I went to a restaurant and a waiter said something like really blatantly shitty and hurtful to like a friend of mine that was sitting oh, there. Yeah. Can't like do just it. an observation thing where it's just like, I, fuck you. Like what the yeah. fuck? Like that's so avoidable. Like that was like one time, but exactly. I agree with you though. Yeah. Um, I love this logic, too, that this guy says that his friend says he won't say please, thank you, or excuse me because the the person won't remember it anyway. Dude. And the the irony is like, you know, if you have a situation where more, most people would just naturally say thank you, you not saying it will probably cause them to remember, hey, who was that fucking asshole that yeah. didn't say thank you? Also, I feel like when a stranger is very nice to me, it not only makes my day better, but I do remember it. Like, I remember nice strangers at least for the last couple of weeks weeks you know and so it's just like yeah i don't know i i would definitely think about if i like held the door open for you and you didn't thank me yeah i guess i'll remember it if that's your goal (laughs) if your goal is just (laughs) to stick in someone's memory i don't know your friend sounds like a fucking sociopath to me yeah that's just really weird i'm sure they're probably a fine guy in other areas but it's like oh never mind i hate him too to their core no we've decided at the gus netty podcast that we hate that guy (laughs) <laughs> here, it sounds like I got another another guy that you might kind of go ugh. At oh right no, I got my I got the uh, raptor claw out. <laughs> oh, thank God, dude! Point at the screen right now. Look at my friend Eddie. Urgh. That's what he'll do to you if you are stupid. Urgh. Urgh. Oh, dude, you're scaring me. I can't even see that thing right now. Don't you love that moment um, in the the kitchen uh, in Jurassic Park when the Velociraptor's going grrr, and the other one's like, "You see, uh, that's my friend Eddie. This is what he'll do to you." <laughs> <laughs> So I want somebody to edit that in as like Lexi and the kid are hiding in the kitchen. You just hear it off screen. Please. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to come get you. <laughs> um, all right. So at permanent handle asks, he says, a friend of mine says that your favorite music entity shouldn't be a band, but rather a solo artist because they are, quote, usually more talented and always more successful. Plus, being in a band guarantees artistic compromise. And I just think he's close minded and wrong. Yeah, no, yeah. you're right. You're right. <laughs> Your Who friend? are your friends? The people that ask in, the friends that you talk about sometimes. Yeah, like, fuck you. You could like whatever you want. Also, yeah, I don't know. It's the idea that there's no value in collaboration because it's, like, yeah. not true to one person's vision. It's, like, sometimes collaboration is great. Sometimes people step in and change your thing for the better because it's two entire minds melding together on a piece of art. Exactly. And like sometimes you don't have the product that you'd think you'd have at the end of the day with like without an essential collaboration. Like I think Lennon and McCartney jointly wrote, I think it's like 50 or 60 songs that like charted on the Billboard Top 200. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like shit like that. That's going to be a fact that someone just destroys me with because I got it incorrect in the comments. But also I would argue that it's an even greater artistic feat when you can work with other people and pull something off successfully because there's inevitably compromise. There's inevitably spillover ideas. Like the ability to work successfully with other people and create art, 
That's a fucking cool thing in itself. Fuck your yeah, pretentious friend. It's it's like trying to say that Always Sunny should never have had writers that weren't Rob. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, that doesn't make any fucking sense. That's really dumb. Also, can I hit you with uh, something that I didn't know until yesterday and it blew my yeah, fucking up. mind? I didn't know that uh, Harold Ramis directed a bunch of The Office episodes. Dude, I'm, I just learned that. What? Dude. Okay, so I was watching the fucking uh, uh, Jim and Pam having a kid, right? Like that okay. episode. I saw at the bottom right of the screen, directed by Harold Ramis. And out loud I went, what? And I looked it up, and he directed a lot of The Office. Oh my god, dude. L- look it up. right. I'll look it up right now. I'll look it up. Yeah, dude, tell me some like hit episodes that he directed. Okay, I, That's didn't, crazy. I didn't look through the list, but the fact that he had directed multiple blew my fucking mind. Rain, okay, Harold Dude, Ramis, if, if you, The Office. In case you guys aren't aware, like Harold Ramis is like one of the most legendary like comedy directors, probably the last fifty years or so. Um, as I say that, and can't tell you a single thing that he's directed off the top of my head. Did he direct um, Ghostbusters? Uh, I think he did Ghostbusters. Well, he did uh, Ghostbusters to... for sure, and Ghostbusters Two, and Caddyshack. But I don't know if he directed them. Did um, he do the Jerk, or that might have been somebody else? I don't. No. He did uh, National Lampoon's Vacation, Analyze This, Groundhog's Day, Stripes, Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters 2. Uh, oh, I didn't know that he wrote, produced, directed, and acted in the terrible movie Year One starring Jack Black oh, and man. Michael Cera. <laughs> so he didn't, he didn't direct... Oh, I mean, it's not a, a bunch, so it's four episodes, but they're fantastic episodes. Uh-huh. So the first one that he ever did was Benny Hanna Christmas. Oh, Legendary episode. Next one he did, Safety Training. Oh, that's like the best episode yeah. ever. Yeah, then kinda. Beach Games, and then The okay. Delivery. So they gave him like the important episodes, pretty much. Wow, dude. Honestly, Safety Training, like even just yeah. the scene in it where they're doing the crash, or the, the CPR dummy is probably like arguably top three office moments ever. That's no, so no, funny. I totally agree. And imagine like, that's so weird because you picture all of these kind of like all of the office cast and then yeah. think like when they did safety training, Harold Ramis was on set telling them what to do in the that's room. That's so there. crazy. Dude. Like Harold Ramis was in the room during the safety training shit. Isn't that weird as fuck? That's, that's really fucking weird, dude. Yo, you know who else directed? A, I, I'm sure there's a bunch of really interesting one-off directors. Yeah, I saw there was a list like of that. like 10 famous directors. Sorry, it cut out for a second, and then it came back in, and I think I was interrupting you. Sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. Uh, I hate you. But uh, <laughs> uh, Brian Cranston directed an episode of The Office. Really? Okay, I'm looking yeah. right now. I think it's Work Bus, if, if that's correct. I think he did Work Bus. Um, I don't know. Do you know who uh, Amy Heckerling is? Uh, does anybody not know who she is? Are you just saying that because you don't know? I've no, I've never heard her <laughs> name in my life. <laughs> what's nice? What's nice is I've pulled up this article and it's just ads, 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 and I can't even. Okay, hold on. It's like the text is disappearing because the ads are prioritizing so much. Dude, we still have to shoot that sketch about the the news article sites or whatever. That's one mm. that I've I've had for fucking years. The first time we're out of quarantine, we're going to go get some ramen and we're going to make some good memes together, all right? Mm. Oh, oh, dude, uh, uh Amy Heckerling uh, directed Clueless and she directed an office episode. Oh, cool. Then there's uh Harold Ramis. I watched Clueless recently and it's fucking great. Uh Joss Whedon directed uh, Business School and Beach Wars. Um, John Favreau directed uh, Moving On. Uh, which episode is that? Is that hmm. like... Is that, the, is that that's not like the end of Michael's run, right? No, because I, I think Goodbye Michael is just... Oh, is Moving On one. maybe the Holly moving one? Oh, God, I don't know. Who knows? That I don't definitely feel like sounds it. pre-Michael exit, though. I'd um, rather speculate about it, too. The, that dude, Mark Webb, that directed the Amazing Spider-Man movies and 500 Days of Summer, uh, did an episode. J.J. Abrams did an episode. Oh. Um, what? Yeah, uh, Cocktails. I don't know which episode that is. Cocktails. Um, is that the early season two-ish one where they go and take Tim Meadows out to Applebee's? Possibly. I don't know. Cocktails. <laughs> <All Yeah>. right, <laughs> <laughs> I know that we could figure it out, but I'd rather just go, eh, fuck it. Anyway, that uh, is pop- fucking fascinating, though. Yeah, dude. Um, it's kind of cutting out right now. You back? Yeah, yeah. I was getting a little of that Discord bounce, you know, where it goes mm, I'm, out. I'm, I'm hearing that uh, the that techno voice. Um, not anymore. Yo, though. watch me dip out and dip in real quick while you 
to tantalize the viewers at home. It just started cutting out, man. I'm sorry, guys. This quarantine shit. Guys, what, out, can boys. you I'm imagine out. what it was like when we're just across the table? All right, I'm back in. Hopefully, I fixed just, it. Oh, he, did you leave? Yeah, I just ducked out of the Discord. So you, oh, okay, because I was, I was saying something sweet, and then it was just like, all right, I'm back. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I'll just go fuck myself then. Um, dude, what were you saying that was so damn sweet? I was I was saying, I was like, I'm missing just being across the table chatting on the set normally. I know. It's like, obviously, creative compromise aside, like, that just is the most vibe in time for us. We can just yeah, shoot dude. shit. Yeah, dude. Um, you want to hit us with some more I'm not even at you. before I'm just I become at these a fucking idiot? Yeah, I got you, <laughs> Pregunta, right here, dude. At the Anon Alpha said, "My guy friends told me that they flush the toilet mid pee. I always oh. wait till the very end." What? That's it. They flush the toilet. Like he's saying, <laughs> multiple friends. Like, hey, fellas, we all flush mid pee, right? <laughs> What's the point? You're not there for the flush experience. You're there to get the pee out. God damn, there's no rush. Like letting go of your penis while you're peeing, flushing the toilet, <laughs> and then having the sitting water have a little bit of pee in it. <laughs> what the fuck? Let it ride, about? boys. That's so weird, dude. Lat. Last time we had an, uh, a question, too, of somebody that said that, that their sister doesn't flush the toilet ever right. and just says somebody else will do insane. it. Insane. But also, weirdly enough, that's selfish insane. I have no idea what... So I, I'm assuming they're saying that by the time the water's done going down, they're done peeing, but there's no way there's not going to be a little bit of sit and piss in that water. And mm -hmm. then you got a pee that's ring true. on your hands in your toilet bowl. And that's gross. Boom. Also, why is it so consistent, especially with guys, of having super gross bathrooms, man? Anybody who's got a go gross bathroom, clean it. There you go. Clean the sink. Yeah. You drip Do toothpaste that. I've on there? definitely not done that. Your bathroom is not, like, messed. I'm talking about the ones you see where people will film a, a video in, like, a frat house, and it looks, like, absolutely fucking disgusting, you know? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We just like come on the sink and like a bar of soap. And well, the you, can keep, and shit. you can just keep you can keep it come on the sink. Um, that's fine. It, as long as it's not toothpaste, that's yeah, probably yeah, fine. Yeah, toothpaste right? would be weird. Um, you got another break? <laughs> I do, I do. Can I can I tell you a low a low volume bathroom thing about Sabrina really quick? <laughs> you're saying low volume, but you're about to tell this to like over a hundred thousand people. <laughs> so choose your words don't. very carefully, Gus. Guys, don't. Say, everyone be really quiet right now. <laughs> Don't tell her I said this. But whenever we go traveling, Sabrina will just take her toothbrush and just set it flat on the counter in the hotel bathroom. Just like it could be in a puddle of soap water. She'll just set it right on the fucking counter. Doesn't prop it on anything. Doesn't put it in the case. But Blows my mind. You could prop it on the toothpaste. Exactly. You get anything to elevate it. It's just like, oh, I'm done with this. Right on that flat surface. It drives. It's my Larry David sensor goes wheel, wheel, wheel off the <laughs> and meter. You're and out like, loud. Why would you do that? Sabrina's laying in the, in the hotel bed and she just hears wee, wee, wee. <laughs> 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 From around the corner, <laughs> you come out holding the toothbrush. Wee, wee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like crying. Like, so take this from my hands. Wheel, wheel. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this episode of the Gus and Eddie podcast is brought to you by... That's the drum roll. Manscaped, everybody. Listen, Eddie, when's the last time you shaved your balls? Well, hold on, guy. Don't answer that. That's a little too personal. Regardless of when you did that, let me tell you a little bit about Manscaped, okay? Manscaped is the only men's brand dedicated to below-the-waist grooming and hygiene. And they're forever changing the grooming game. Guys, I didn't know there's a game. I hope I'm winning. With their Perfect Package 3.0 Essentials Kit, all right? It's the perfect tools for your family jewels. The Perfect Package 3.0 Kit comes with the new and improved Lawn Mower 3.0, waterproof, cordless body trimmer, and a ton of other liquid formulations to wrap 
round out your manscaping routine. This third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to prevent manscaping accidents. I don't know what those are. Those sound bad though, so you better use this. Millions of balls are about to be nick free thanks to Manscaped's advanced skin safe technology. When you purchase the new perfect package 3.0 kit at manscaped.com, you get the biggest bang for your buck, guy. You hear me right there? Listen, subscribers are going to get a new replacement blade refill for your lawnmower trimmer delivered to your door every three months, making sure your trimmer always stays safe and fresh and clean. And now for a limited time, subscribers get not only one dot dot dot, but two free gifts. The Shed Travel Bag, a $39 value, and the patented high-performance anti-chafing Manscaped Boxer Briefs. Wow, that sounds military grade, guy. This is the perfect package for your perfect package. Listen, you can get 20% off plus free shipping with the code Gus and Eddie at manscaped.com. So do yourself a favor and always use the right tools for the job. You can get 20% off and free shipping with the code Gus and Eddie at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code Gus and Eddie at checkout. Your partner, your body, and your balls will thank you. Thank you, Manscaped, for sponsoring. All right, get out of here. <laughs> All right, I got a pretty good here for you. All right, at doorframe37 says, Hey, important, how quickly could you speed run every crime in the U.S. if you could choose the date and your age and you don't have to hide from the cops and stuff? Oh, my what? God. <laughs> well, I don't... Well, That'd be one, a hard one. There's a lot of crimes that I would definitely not want to do, so... But you have to <laughs> do all of them, Eddie. <laughs> um, Let's see. Well, you could get... Murder and a couple of driving crimes done at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Now, now you're thinking efficiently. Here's like the problem, though, right? Because you want it uh-huh. to be, you need to add in premeditated, but then also uh, like crime of passion, right? So what you need to do True. is you need to have one target that's premeditated and someone standing behind them that you didn't mean to kill, and they just uh-huh. happen to be there. So you get the involuntary like manslaughter charge right the way at the same time as pre- so like they ask you when you're like uh, in prison or I guess in, uh, in court they they're trying to say that you premeditated both and you go oh no no guys I'm not that awful I only meant to kill the first guy not the second guy he just happened to be there this guy right here dude you fucking I get, get it, it. Dude, and then you steal wh- his wallet oh, <laughs> cuz you need to add another one there you there. go This dude, this makes sense. Okay, because I was trying to think now too. If you could only have use one object, like a tool or or like a machine or something, to what what could you use to commit the most crimes? And I think you're right. I think it's got to be a car. Yeah, but I think you got to go a step further and say something like a a, a Tesla Cybertruck. Here's my reasoning. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It has the durability, minus the windows on stage, it has the durability to sustain a ton of inevitable impact-heavy crimes that you got to do. You got to do the hit and run. You got to do the involuntary manslaughter. You can do vehicular manslaughter. You can bang out your DUIs in there as well. Right. It's not. It can take a beating. Also, it has the internet capabilities built into the console to do shit like bank fraud, voter ID internet fraud. Internet piracy. You can whip out... Exactly. You can get a little Dude. DVD copy of, of Epic Movie on your console. Dude. There. Okay. So here, he, can I ex- describe my perfect crime then for all the crimes at once? Yes. Okay. So I wake up that day. I have to, uh, I put, I cross my legs and I premeditate the first murder. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, my toothbrush is sitting face down on the counter with nothing propped up. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> and so I brush my teeth. I go to my Tesla cyber truck in the garage, right? I take the plates off, crime number one. I then detach the side mirrors. That's another violation. I break the brake lights and the headlights. I then speed through red light cameras, and I know where the guy is. Guy number one, I have premeditated. Guy number two, I do not mean to harm, but something's going to happen. You know what I mean? As I'm on my way, I'm speeding in a school zone. Schools, it's a coronavirus, so there's no kids. They're not in danger. Uh, but it's still a crime. Um, is it still a crime right now? That's my question. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that later. That's a whole different discussion. I'll pray on it. I'll pray As on I'm it. speeding we'll, through we'll the there. school zone, 
I download 50 pirated copies of The Shaggy Dog starring Tim Allen. I In every language so that it's multicultural. Right. I bring up the one that's in Korean and I watch it while driving. That's another crime. Um, mm-hmm. I put in headphones while driving as well. And I start texting all my friends and saying, aha, the shaggy dog. What a great movie. (laughs) Then I slam in to the people. Let's not. I don't want to describe that. I get out. I happen to be also naked in decent exposure. I walk over. I steal his wallet. I'm sure there's some crime for murder for stealing things, too. And then I'm not sure how to finish the crime off. What's an extra one I can grab? Oh, public urination. Not on the person, See, just that's, in general. Oh, that's a good point. But, Eddie, you do remove yourself from the tool, though. You could save yourself a step if, when you're still in the car in the garage, you carve a little hole with your welding torch out the driver's side door right. so that you could hi- hang your little button peen out and you could both flash people for the public indecency and also projectile spray pee and poop on people there as you, you go. go by for public urination shit. Also, when you're taking the plates off, you can replace them with with ver- with literal written out threats to specific people. So on the traffic camera, there's now photographic evidence of like, I, Gus Johnson, I'm going to kill my dad, Mr. Johnson. And you know what? I, I got an extra one for you, right? As I'm speeding through, What's that? Uh, as I'm speeding and I'm, I'm, I'm peeing and pooping on people, I take a picture of one of the guys and I, I text him and I go, ha ha, you look so stupid with poop on your face. I, if you don't pay me 50 grand, I'm going to release this to the public. Now I've blackmailed him mm. and he's so embarrassed and, sexual exploitation. and he goes, looks like the poop's on my face now. And he says something like that and it's really funny, but also I'm still blackmailing him. <laughs> That's true. Is this the answer I'm that so this person wanted? <laughs> <laughs> this is the answer everybody needed at a time like this. That's, that's the first thing I'm doing when I'm getting out of here, man. <laughs> but in all of these crimes, I still will never drink and drive. Can't do it, buddy. That's smart. I click will it, be on PCP, though. Click it or ticket, <laughs> which is not, which is <laughs> yeah, not a you. drinking and driving thing. <laughs> I think we can all agree we've had our fun. I will still do this, but I'm buckling up. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's that's, a good I, that's the perfect crime. Nothing could go wrong. <laughs> it's a fucking banger, and I think that's a perfect time that we open up some flipping. <laughs> All right, guys, don't send us any fucking contaminated mail anymore. Uh, I think there's just shit in the P.O. box that's been there now for probably a a month and a half. I can't go get it. I'm going to give my disease to everybody. So sorry if it's in there. There's so much information that I can't dox this person. Um, There's even a phone number on here. Um, Oh, my God. So this is, uh, it looks to be from uh, Korea. And Oh, sick. Um... It's addressed to Goop and Ubi. All right, that sounds right. Um, okay, I gotta, I gotta open this stall for me. Okay, uh, thank you guys for putting silly uh, names on the packages. Um, I would like to make a formal request. I understand that it's probably not a great idea to ask the internet to not do anything. Uh, or to not do something uh, and expect them to follow through, but I trust our wholesome boys. Uh, can you please refrain from putting any racial slurs as our fake names on the packages? Has that happened? I've gotten a couple of... It has, oh. and I have just thrown those ones in the garbage. I'm not taking them home. Absolutely not. Uh, That's not a boy thing are the, to do. Not a boy thing to do, and it's only happened like maybe two or three times, but uh, the post office is run by a lot of lovely black women... And that is the only people that work there. So fu- I feel uh, fuck extraordinarily you you fucking uncomfortable when they have to go, is this your package? I will usually just say no or I'll say, I'm sorry. I don't know who sent that in. It's fucking not cool, guys. So please don't do that. But that's just for the three idiots out there. Yeah. The rest of you guys are cool. Um, anyway. I There's definitely um, a smell to this package. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. it's not, is it it's, food? There, it, there seems to be snacks, but it's not that. There's like a chemical smell, I think, to the tape that was used. Um, okay, okay, I could dig it. I just, I got. What does it look like? It's just, it's a regular box, but then the the shipping label has so much information on it that I have to open it on the <laughs> ground. Good God, I miss mail. I haven't touched mail in weeks. I don't remember what it feels like. Okay, so I haven't even touched a mail in weeks. I got a great note. 
Um, okay. So, oh, and they even made like a, a, a table of contents called package contents and they'd say what it is. That's so cool. Okay. So this is from Kate. Hey boys, I wanted to send you something for the podcast and I've been in Korea for the last year. So enjoy some Korean snacks. Oh dude, you know what's, this is a very cute piece of like uh, Korean paper for it where it's got like little cartoons uh. on it, but it's also got dots everywhere. So everything looks like a period in this thing. So I can't, it's not your fault, Kate. This is a great note, but uh, I, it's hard to read. Uh, her her um her handwriting's lovely though. So enjoy okay, so Sick. some enjoy some Korean snacks slash other goodies. By the time this gets there, I'll probably be back home in uh, uh Minnesota, Midwest gang. Plus shipping by boat is dumb cheap here. I hope you're both having a wonderful twenty twenty so far. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Kate. You knew Kate, you knew you knew um, Damn I'm it. making so uh, or sorry, I'm I'm so excited to see the cool shit you guys get to uh, do slash make. Hopefully the new day decade brings some great opportunities um <laughs> weird enough i'm one of the people that listen to the podcast before watching either of your channels that's so weird for me to hear that's so cool yeah. if you are a podcast listener and don't watch our channels there's not much on my channel not not much there's hours <laughs> hours and hours of content but if you want to catch up on the last year maybe take you a couple hours so uh weird All enough right. oh wait no that's before i lost my place because i'm a dumb boy as soon as i saw your guys videos uh immediately i started watching one after the other i think i watched eddie's videos first oops she said oops not me <laughs> regardless i've been pretty stressed lately so thank you guys for doing what you do i'm reading this full note because we have one piece of mail and also i'm lonely so um <laughs> if you can uh spare time please manually type in this video url I, I, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I really want to do it. Um, good. Okay, hold on. One sec. It's a good... I'm going to... Do you want to place a guess? Um, uh, I'm guessing Rick Roll. I, okay, let's see. Let's hear one sec. I just want to see something really quick. Um, Hold on. Or I got to type in. I got a mansion made of diamonds. The That's what I like parody. It could be that too. Yeah, hold on. I'm just checking something really quick. Okay, so this is uh, all right. I gotta type it in. Stall for me. All right, guys. Uh, by the way, uh, thank you, guys. I've I, we we've like Eddie said too. It's always really exciting whenever we'll see people be like, "Hey, I just found your podcast and I've been listening for a few months and I checked out your videos." That's so weird to us because it's like we've been doing YouTube, you know, our channels respectively for like near five years now, and so it's weird when people just come out in the wild and just say, "Oh, cool, you guys have YouTube channels too." Thank you for doing that. Thank you for sharing the podcast with people. Our numbers continue to grow, and we feel really cool about that. So mm -hmm. you guys are true boner bros. Thank you. God damn it. What? Hold on. I only played in my headphones. I'll play it for you. <laughs> okay. What is it? I ah, Yes! Dude. <laughs> I was going to do it today. I was uh, going to oh, do yes! it today again. And Kate did you think beat me to it. <laughs> Kate did it to me before I could do it to you. <sighs> From thousands of miles around the world, somebody you've never met beat you to the Fuck. joke. If you guys don't know, okay, back when we had our podcast, Okay, I'll Talk, <laughs> it was like this over chat where I, I used to set up things like I was telling Gus something very personal or meaningful because we didn't know each other's like full life stories yet. And I'd get to yeah. a point where something was about to happen and I would play this song. It's now buffering, which is great for when I'm trying to show a video. Watch this fuck. Yeah, there you go. I got a mansion made of diamonds. <laughs> Minecraft D was fighting. Creepers non fighting. Here. So go and I'm waiting for my favorite part. Ready? Mine's in diamonds. Oh, yeah. Where is it? Here it is. Find a creep in a cavern. Fight him with my arms. Diamonds in my e chest. <laughs> I love that one. Dude, oh, man. I was going to do it. I had it cute. The reason I said hold on one sec is because I had it queued up on my phone, and I was trying to compare the links to see if it was the same thing. But it was a oh, different. Oh, that's so funny. Hers was a different version of the video. So I was like, oh, good. It's not that. I'll still do it later. She got me, <laughs> dude. Fuck. That's fucking that's hilarious, That's great, Kate. Dude. Okay. Okay. First thing on the list of package contents, I see magnets. Hold on. Ooh, I'm, good. I'm gonna we pull them magnets. out. So we got, um, oh, dude, there's a, a saltine like cheese crackers, but Korean versions. You know the ones that are, like are the little package ones with cheese in the center. 
Oh, the ones that are usually like Austin brand or whatever? Sure. I just, I don't know the brand. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky. I'm, don't come down there and fucking spit in your mouth right now, Eddie. Um, this is uh, a, um, looks like a, a tea tree mask. So that's cool. <laughs> oh, like a face yeah. mask? So I'll pu- nice. You're going to get some glowing Dude, I'm going to be glowing. Okay. Then we got, what is this thing? Is this a cookie? I have no clue. So, chocolate. Um, wait, is this? I can't. So, this might be a shock to everyone um, uh, for the podcast listeners, but I can't read Korean. So, this is either. <laughs> I believe this is um, uh, either. Oh, wait. A pumpkin. Okay. So, it's a pumpkin. Uh, do you, would you say? So, obviously, I think we both say caramel, right? I say caramel. But if you're yep. talking about an item, caramel. would you say caramels for like plural? I'm, I believe I would. I'm so – the thing is it's so Midwestern to just do caramel no matter what. I don't know anyone says caramel at all, so I would just default to caramels. Yeah, I always said caramels. I, and the thing is that's one – it's the same thing with Reese's where it's like, you guys are right. We're wrong. <laughs> like it's just like yeah. I understand, but it's the way we say. It. I've actually been fixing it, and I've been saying Reese's lately. Um, That's good. <laughs> La changed me, man. Um, okay. <laughs> so then we got um, some more candy. That oh no, this is okay. So I think that I got the caramels. <laughs> um, then good. I think we got a, a chocolate covered ri- rice cake slash mochi. Um, and then oh, interesting. There's just there's just some more snacks in here. So, thank you so much to Kate, and that was uh, M- Gus Mel M- M- for today. God, that- shit's weird right now, dude. Dude, yeah. Can I just say for that package, I would just like to say, okay, fuck you, Google Translate. I was trying to say thank you in Korean, but I it just it doesn't have the auto thing to say it. So pretend I'm saying thank you in Korean right now. Wow, that was really Good the night. pronunciation was solid. Thank you. I worked on it. You got any more preguntas, bro? You got damn right. I also got a push notification that said Floyd Mayweather's daughter arrested for stabbing. What? That's fucking weird. All right. Anyway, so Floyd Mayweather's daughter stabbing people. Let's go to the next question. Um, <clears throat> here we got at uh, Cone Joey said disagreement. In class the other day, I assume this was before Ooh, all the shit I got shut down. I love classroom disagreements. They're the best kind. In class the other day, a girl asked if she could go to the restroom, and the teacher asked, quote, is it an emergency? Mm. When the girl said yes, the teacher said, if it was, you would have just ran out. Mm. You need to stay here. <laughs> I want to hit somebody. Dude. What the fuck is that? What in... I never understood that at all. Also, so it's like he's punishing or she is pun. Or did, he, did it say he for the teacher? Did it specify? Um, I think it's a she is from what I remember. I kind of uh, just assumed the, the, teacher the said. jerk teacher saying that would be a he kind of. I don't know why. But um, yeah. wow, Eddie, do you hate men? Um, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, dude, that's like so for being polite and following the rules, she was punished. <clears throat> Not cool, man. It's insane. I, you know what I always fucking hated too, and I understand that there's varying levels of this, you know, from from class to class, school to school, district, just across the world. But that kind of punishment shit for having to leave class. I had so many teachers at every level, like when I was growing up, that would like like actually punish you for forgetting to like go to the bathroom before class, ah, dude. or for saying like, "Hey, I forgot my book in my locker. Can I go grab dude, it?" Dude, that's the thing is like, especially where they would be like, "You, you had a." A passing period of five minutes and it's like dude my class was across the school i like yeah getting that's the thing is it's always was it five minutes for your high school it was like five minutes i'm pretty I'm sure i'm pretty yeah. sure ours was five too and i remember never having enough time to get to fucking class mm-hmm. and so it's just like any teacher i loved in college where some some of the professors would be like don't even ask to go to the bathroom it disrupts class to ask just walk out Because that should be Mm -hmm. the norm. Human beings, no matter where they are, should be able to get up and go to the bathroom without any other human being like, wait, stop. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. 
And it should be for anything. It doesn't even have to be a bathroom. Like, maybe, what if you're having a fucking panic attack? You need to get out of there. What if you're expecting a medical call for your family? Just leave. And also, it's like, I never understood it, too, because school is supposed to be preparing us for the real working world. When does that ever happen where you're at your desk and you're like, yo, boss, got to pinch one off? And he goes, well, sorry, Dan, you're fucking fired today. Dude, you know? ever since I graduated, I have pissed whenever and wherever I want it. Luckily, wherever <laughs> is always a bathroom, but I don't... Or outside the driver's door of a Tesla Cybertruck. Let's not forget. In the future, yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, no, I'm not going to commit those crimes. <laughs> That's true. We'll leave a moment of silence. And <laughs> um, oh. But no, yeah, the... Uh, dude, that shit's insane. Also, it's like, but Gus, you say panic attack. What's better for your panic attack? Going to the bathroom or having your teacher shame you in front of all of your peers? Exactly. It's so uncomfortable. It's like, what if someone's having their period? What if somebody is about to throw up? Just get out of the fucking room. It shouldn't be an interrogation session. It's you know what I guarantee to? Uh, and I'm not saying do this, and obviously school's out right now, but I am willing to bet like 90% of the time at least, if if you actually had a teacher giving you a problem about that, go right to the fucking principal. Go yeah. to the school board and be like, hey, somebody's not letting me fucking use my own damn body when I'm going to piss my pants in class. Yeah, dude. <sighs> it'll, it'll get fixed. Why do teachers think that's fucking stupid? And they take it as a respect thing sometimes. Like, that's so disrespectful. It's like, yeah, sorry I have to pee after I ate lunch. It's yeah. a 90-minute class. I think that's... That's, the real thing is like because we know teachers as well is like and they are all the people that we know that are teachers are like cool and normal where it is just mm -hmm. like some people that become teachers and it's not even a, a thing of like there are so many teachers across America where it's like when you think of that it's not really a teacher thing it's like that person is individually just an asshole and abusing their power like that's really just yep. it especially like in high school or college are you kidding me those are pretty much adults that need to piss mm -hmm. or shit, and they hold it in when they need to. You know what I mean? Like, come on, dude. Yeah. I felt so much more infuriated in college when I'd have professors try to do that shit, where it's just like, dude, really? It's yeah. like, you're talking to me, and it's like, I'm 22 years old. Like, I, why, you're lucky I even asked and didn't just fucking leave. I'm paying for this. You were talking, and I'm sitting at the back, and I'm dipping out for three minutes. Yeah, Fuck you. I think I've, I've definitely mentioned this on the podcast before, and you know it, of course, is that I had this one professor at community college that Tony and I both had. Um, mm -hmm. And I had him for two separate classes because for a certain section of my uh, – like gen eds, I just knocked him out in one semester and I happened to have him for two different ones, right? And it's like, yep. dude, there was one time where Tony and I, I think it was like for our birthday, we're like, we're not going to class. Let's just like play Battlefield and get some lunch and then like hang out with our friends tonight and drink. You know, it was a Thursday. Um, yep. That coming Tuesday, uh, he, when we walked into class, then as everyone was kind of coming in, called us out to the hallway and tried to give us a talk about our uh, attendance. And because we had chosen to miss a day uh, as mm -hmm. adults. And that's what I don't understand is like the, the kind of thing is for I think I mentioned this before, too, is like for for high school. You're like your parents pay taxes, but essentially it's expected that, you know, you go to high school for free, you know, not yeah. actual free. And the teachers have all like they have to abide by certain rules that the school imposes on them. And like, but you also, um, like they, you have some power over those teachers by going to the like administration or like your parents, you know, in the community, you have yeah. some power over your high school teachers in college. You're pretty much directly paying the bills of your professors and they get free reign over whatever the fuck they want. How does that make sense? When you're actually paying for school, they're like, I decide the rules. It's like, what? Yeah. Like, you can decide I, whether I can go to class or not. I'm an adult, and I'm paying for this. Yeah, I think especially in, in more of a general education sense, you know, if unless you're in, like, some grad school course where it, it's like you're eight years in. It, it's like the freak accident, not accident shit, but the freak situation stuff excluded. If you are a college professor, the only two situations I can think of where you would need to have a talk with a student about attendance is if you are A, just checking in on them because they're gone all the time. And you're just being like, are you, what's going on? Are you good here? Right. Or if B, their absence is directly negatively impacting the teacher or other students, maybe in a group project. Right. Otherwise, who fucking cares if they're turning their shit in, if they're being present most of the time, if they're getting their shit done, just fuck off. Okay? Exactly. And that's the thing is like, I've had... It, it, 
it, it's so frustrating because they treat it like it's the norm. But in college, you'll have one professor that's like, I don't give a fuck when you come in. As long as you pass the class and you're learning, like yeah. come whenever you need to. And then you go to another class and they're like, so we really need to address this attendance problem, okay? You know, that's the thing is yeah. the way he talked to me and Tony felt like how a second grade teacher would talk to me. And it's like, dude, oh, I hate like it, dude. I this is community college, you know? And the thing is, resulting yeah. of that, Tony and I skipped way more class just in spite of it. I, I did not like yeah, that Yeah, good. Guy. Fuck that person. Yeah, especially sometimes it was so awkward. I had a speech class that semester, and it was like the walking into our speech class, it was the doors to that part of the building. Were, the speech class was in the hallway near that main door, and so you could book yeah. it straight there. But I knew that if I had Tony and I had skipped his class, we had speech next, and sometimes we'd still go to speech because we didn't want to miss it because our professor was fine. And I knew that yep. like he would walk that way after class. So I would have to like, we'd have to like check the hallway, like crack the door open with like a bunch of students walking <laughs> and like see if he was there and then like sprint fast walk like across the hallway just to get to the classroom and get inside. Cause I ran into That's him one really time funny. and he was like, he was actually kind of understanding then and he'd be like, well, what's up? We we're like, yeah, traffic got us, you know, like it was yeah. so, it, it was bad. I do. I really didn't uh, like going to college at all. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I shit and I dude well I'm not asking you to shit I'll shit whenever I damn well please um can I shit on a college professor for a second here uh, uh yeah and also I just love that this is like a like every two months on the podcast we just start <laughs> yeah. venting <laughs> go ahead it's like school therapy like yeah. just four years of just repressed hatred yeah dude I haven't, gone, I haven't gone to a class in like two and a half years and I'm still like so <laughs> resentful for it well, because I, the things that bother me are, are especially things where I know that they're still happening to some degree and are still affecting other people negatively. Exactly, yeah. Um, and, and I thought of a couple, like, stories this reminded me of. I'm just going to do one right now because, you know, I don't want to take up all the time. But, but I had a, a professor in college. This has nothing to do with attendance. I had a professor in college who was teaching... Uh, like kind of a human sexuality class and, and it was just like a gen ed that I, mean, I had sorry. to get and you know yeah very serious stuff um, but I mean I, I thought it was a really interesting class especially like being able to take it as like a fully fledged adult with other just like 20 something year olds where it's just like hey let's kind of skip past the bullshit you know you know where babies come from here are just sex things you might not know also you know? I want to add like my, tips my ooh tricks, was but. that I was um, like uh, horny and immature not that I was trying to discredit their genre or their class at all no but the joke was on <laughs> yeah. me being dumb I I respect those teachers okay go ahead I get you I've been gone a few weeks you're getting thirsty all right <laughs> anyway uh, man I can't even <laughs> tell you <laughs> who, who am I anyway, gonna play dick sucks uh, with <laughs> that's that's a uh, yeah. I'll, oh, Tony, link down below the dead Kevin uh, uh, heads or tails video, please. Thank you. Everyone should go watch it. That's that's a good one. Uh, that'll I'll throw my hat in the ring. Eddie and Tony showed me that stuff. The old dead Kevin stuff will be my old boy of the weeks. There's my add, and then add it on with dead Kevin. I would like to add uh, again uh, Chris and Jack to the boy of the week. We'll link a Chris and Jack video in there too. God, I love those boys. Yes. Good good shit. Um, anyway, my, my professor, I was an adult, I was taking a human sexuality class and I made sure to damn well specify that what she was telling to my class of just 111 kids was, was what she was trying to say because we had a lesson we were talking about consent, you know, consent for sexual activities. And my professor said that it is possible and it should be accepted that a person has the right to withdraw consent retroactively after a sexual encounter when there is no substances involved and there was no force involved. I forgot you told me about that. Like where it was kind of in, in specifying it, it was like if they regret it, they can withdraw consent, right? Yes, and Which I made sure... like. And I, I didn't usually engage in the class because I was just like, I'm just here to do my time. But that was so wild. And she was she was saying that. And I was like looking around. And it was like nobody had a problem with that. So I raised my hand and I was just like, hey, I just like I just want to clarify. Like, are you referring to like maybe revoking consent if one of the people was like extremely intoxicated and it was clear that one of the parties was taking advantage of the other members? She says, no, no, not just in that. Like I'm saying w if somebody was fully sober. 
and there was no no force involved, that it's possible uh, and it should be accepted the next day or, or whenever for somebody to, to retroactively revoke consent. Oh. And I was like, I said, I'm sorry. I said, I think that's an incredibly irresponsible thing to say. And much to my fucking shock, nobody came to my aid, Eddie. Oh. In fact, I had multiple other students, not that it matters, they were all female, come to the professor's side and said like, um, are you kidding me? Like, that sounds kind of like a, uh, you know, boys will be boys, male chauvinist thing to say. And I was like, are you fucking insane? I'm saying in a situation where two completely sober, no force verbally or, or physically involved, when two of these adults have a sexual, like, contact, one of them can just decide afterwards... I didn't want to do that. I revoked my consent. So now technically you're a fucking rapist. Yeah. What? That's ins- oh my Th- God. What a fucking irresponsible thing to be teaching college students. Yeah. What the fuck world do we live in like that? And like, I wanted to specify about those individual things to be like, you're saying this, right? Because like, I agree that it, you know, if somebody's super intoxicated and shit, that it's probably not fucking cool to engage with them at all, you know? But she was just like, yeah, if you're sober. Anyway, I'm repeating myself three times here. What the fuck was that, though? That's yeah. insane. Yeah, because the thing is, like, the only time if you vaguely mention that idea that I would think is, like, if you, somebody felt pressured in the moment, but the fact that you... Yep. Like, and they still gave it, but because they were, you know, in fear of something. But then, you, yes. yeah, the fact that you specified that and they were like, no, just in general, if you make the choice and then you regret it. Then. Yeah. It's like, what? And then it's like, and then again, too, it's like, I get it for the other students. I probably wouldn't want to jump in. in oh, like I wouldn't. Uh, if situation. I was in class with you, I'd agree with you, but I wouldn't. I would not. Ju- if, if we weren't friends, I'd be like, I'm not. T- yeah. I'm not touching this one. There's not a chance, dude. But it's like, and then suddenly I'm the fucking guy that like multiple people in the class will think like wrongly like hey who's that fucking you suddenly up there you suddenly like, become that that conservative kid on twitter that dresses in a suit for his profile picture <laughs> yeah i'm not um actually people like i'm not just trying to be like um, own the feminist libtard like some idiot i'm saying hold on this sounds like a dangerous perspective i just would like clarification i disagree with this what the f- and i just i hate that i i hate it when somebody puts you in the position where it's like then you have to play defense and then you no matter what you say or what your position is you just look desperate because then you're yeah, like dude. okay well oh, oh, what the fuck I, now I gotta prove I'm not this guy there's nothing more frustrating <laughs> I know this is gonna sound so naive for both of us but being in a room and I know as everyone has dealt with this at least once in their life where you know a hundred percent you're right but the room is telling you you're wrong and it's like yeah what what do I do here? <laughs> you know what I mean? Even with some dumb shit, I've had that in my life where it's like you're with a couple of friends and it's like not even, it's just a fact thing. And they're all like, yeah. no. And it's just like, what? What do you want me to say though? <laughs> all right, guys. I <laughs> I just talked for a few minutes and I and I, I said some personal information. <laughs> I, freaked up. I cut in later. I'm from the future. Slightly more than <laughs> Gus. Do you guys want to know what he said? <laughs> no, Eddie, don't tell them. That's a Patreon exclusive. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, don't just have consent and be nice to people. You guys are the bomb, though. We don't have any problems Dude, I'm there. getting sweaty. I turned the AC off. I got the lights on me right now. Mm-hmm. Your boys are sweat. Dude, that's one thing um, with filming stuff. If you guys don't film things often, I'm sure a lot of people do. We, we I'm sure have a lot of uh, like YouTube audience people that like make YouTube videos or like to film things. I can never get over the fact that when you're filming things, it's always got to be sweaty. Can we invent air conditioners that are fucking quiet can we invent air that doesn't make a breeze noise because like because <laughs> i get so fucking hot and sweaty whenever we film things dude every commentary video dude, i'm dripping by the end i fucking hate it i the sweatiest i ever got dude it was when wubby came over and we shot the Wendy oh my god Williams you guys video. shot that for like fucking two and a half hours in it, the direct yeah. sun. 
Oh my god, it's like we, if you look at the behind the scenes for that, it's not out anywhere, but it was literally like every 20 minutes, there's just Wubby and I standing up doing the shirt tug thing, just going, Jesus fucking Christ, dude, getting paper towels, wiping down, well, holy shit. I think people can guess that have seen our apartments from sketches or like any sketch thing I did for my commentary videos or anything, where usually where our podcast set is, that collapses, uh, we collapse the cubicle walls into one of our walls, and so our, our living room is... Essentially, I would say it looks like a sitcom set if you were to look in from the window. Yeah. So it's like it, we have this one giant window that covers like the full wall. It's not like floor to ceiling. We're not we're not wealthy boys, but it is this this big nice window that we like a lot. But the thing is, what happens is at a certain point in the day, um, usually it's like mid afternoon, even with it like the winter and summer, right? Um, where the sun just blasts it directly, and so it just heats up the glass. And if the shades are open. It essentially makes the the living room an oven. And so if you're filming something and you need natural light, it gets so fucking hot in here, dude. It's so, oh, so yeah. Unbearable. With Gus and Wubby, it was like they were shooting out here with the sun directly cooking them for probably two and a half hours. And I would say like the, the uh, thermostat doesn't say the exact temperature. It can get up to like, I'd say maybe like 85 while you're shooting. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? And then if direct sunlight, it might be like 105, like if you're really just sitting in it. And it's like, and it's two boys with their butt cheeks on like Amazon Basics desk chairs unmoving for like half hour chunks. We got to like, get some better chairs, dude. These chairs are not, they are uh, falling apart, <laughs> man. <laughs> Did I tell you about my chair fuck up right before the quarantine? I'm so pissed. No, you just asked me about what my room chair was so you could order one. Exactly. So Eddie's got this great room chair. It's got like nice rollerblade-esque wheels. When you, you put it on go, the wood, I, it feels like there's no friction. It's like you're floating. Dude, I want to take that chair into like a middle school gymnasium it's and so use it fun. to like kill fourth graders. And you could <laughs> probably go across the whole gym on just one push with that chair. It's so powerful. I know. I love it so much. It's so great. <laughs> But I hit Eddie up. I was like, hey, what kind of chair do you have? I was like, because I, I, especially as I become an adult, I'm so used to still living super cheap from my college days that I'm always like, oh, well, let's just get, I don't know, like $40, $50 Amazon chairs. Yeah. And it's just a, a, even though it's something, it's like, ah, we use these every single day and they would have paid for themselves in a month. I'm like, let's go cheap. But then I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to spend like $220, I think it was, for like a desk chair. Whoa, how did I do that? That's honestly then, what I've been doing too, where it's like, I think we, even in our college mindset, it's like, yeah, you just buy cheap shit. But really, you end up replacing the thing so many times that like nice things, if mm -hmm. you buy something that's well reviewed, you can use for like 15 years and they'll be fine. Dude, I'm done buying fucking furniture on Amazon. It's the biggest oh, hunk dude, of shit I ever. Know. The dressers and end tables they set up. It's the shittiest particle board wood. It's dude, my, everything sucks. My couch in my room is like if you laid cloth on like a, a piece of concrete. It's so uncomfortable, yeah. <laughs> man. It's so bad. But it looks cool. You hear cool. my chair right now? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can. Oh, no. So, yeah. So, what it's happened like to your chair? It's been like less than a year. Dude, okay, so I order this fucking chair, and and it the new chair or Amazon chair? It is an Amazon chair, but it's br oh, it's not an Amazon brand. It's brand new. It's a different brand name. I purchased it off of Amazon, but not the, the one that, that I got. Have. Oh wait, dude, it is I think the it's the one that you have. Okay, and I'm it's pretty sure, and it's bad. Well, the the problem is it came broken. Is the issue? Oh, so like you know how the 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 wheels are attached to like five different rungs? There's that like octopus. Yeah thing that you screw the wheels into one of the one of the octopus rungs was fully twisted like 90 degrees oh so and it's like steel so i tried you know inserting the ball bearing and and like little pieces of metal and shit and trying to like bend it down and i couldn't it's just wrenched into place so i can't wheel the thing because it's just all wobbly and shit so i documented all the photos and i was just like to amazon again i was like Hey, like this just came fully broken. Like you can see it's all bent to shit. Like, can I get a refund for this? And again, you guys know my fucking history with Amazon. I had so many problems with people stealing packages and shit and Amazon fucking stuff up with my computer parts that at this point they think probably I'm stealing shit. And they're like, we can't, we're not just going to give you a refund. They're like, you have to mail it back in. So it's like, all right, fine. They go, we're going to mail you the shipping thing in a couple of days. Well, during that time, I had fucking coronavirus hit and I self-quarantined. So now I'm just out like 220 bucks and I still got this busted ass chair up in the apartment. Jesus. Dude, that's the, that th sucks. the weird thing is like with 
some shit like Postmates or DoorDash or I, I, you know, we, we kind of hate these companies that we use all the time, but like, yeah. um, at least they give refunds if something's like colossally fucked up. Amazon's just like, mm-hmm. we own you. We're not going to give you a refund. Are you kidding me? Exactly. And they're like, and pack it up and, oh, we sent you a broken flash drive. S- pack it up and go to the post office and send us a flash drive so we can send you one back. Or you're just going to buy a new one and get it in two days. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. And also, it's like if you guys have ever set up a desk chair... You can't fucking take those things apart. You put yeah. in the hydraulic tube thing. You actually How can't. do I remove that? I, I don't you think you can. You literally fucking can't. So I tried cramming all the shit into the box. It's I stretched the box to shit. I had to tape it up anyway. And now I have this dumb idiot box hunk of cardboard shit up here. I try I put the chair together. It's it's fine. I mean, you can sit in it, but it's clearly just going to keep bending and tipping over. Je- Stupid Jeff shit. Jeff Bezos needs to answer for this. He does. I, Give me a call, Jeff. I had a discussion um, with somebody recently. Uh, Jeff Bezos, what do you think his dick size is? I think sm- very small. I and not in a damn, like let's know, shit on though. him just because he's. I just I think for the most part, here's the big giveaway. Not only being kind of like, I think you have to be an insane person to be a CEO uh, to really move yeah. up like that. I think you got to be crazy. Um, mm-hmm. But the fact that he bought. I believe the, it was the most expensive home in LA, right? I think so. So if you're a, a billionaire and you're a confident guy, why would you buy that house other than to like flex on people to compensate for something? Why not just get it's like a one? Because the thing is, think about that. He looked up most expensive home in LA and didn't, if that is the case, like it didn't even matter what location or like what his personal taste was. You know what I mean? Like imagine yeah. just buying a house. To, so I don't know. I think he's got a small dick. That's my, I w- <laughs> that's my guess. I could totally, I totally fucking see it, dude. I see his here's, dick in my mind floating around and here's it's a where, tight inch and a half. Yeah. Sorry. Again, I really hope people don't think I'm like interrupting. There's these gaps and then I'm like, Oh no, I'm sorry. Uh, Discord's just kind of fucking up here. Here's where I, I draw the line for it. I think you and I are pretty confident boys. We go to parties. Yeah. We like having fun. I, I feel like uh, all around where we're, we rank pretty decent on confidence lately. I can't be bothered to put on a button up shirt, less than, let alone fucking buying the most expensive home in L.A. <laughs> like yeah. both of us are like, I'm not going to go to a party and, and button up a shirt. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, like, and like straight up, he's buying the most expensive home in one of the like biggest cities in the world. Yeah, it's insane. How many of Jeff Bezos's Google searches do you think, like, if, if he got hacked, how many would start with, what is the most expensive blank? Yeah, just because oh, he's trying to buy shit. He's got it. That's, that, would have, that would be kind of fun to just be like, yeah. what's the, mo- the most expensive grilled cheese? <laughs> I'm going to go get that. And it's going to be just decimals of what I actually own, you know? Yeah, dude. Dude, uh, with the fucking dress shit again, too, it's like, I, like, I'm proud of that in a way, and, and I'm glad that I don't put as much importance in that kind of stuff, because I remember this last year for the uh, st- uh, streamies, uh, yeah, the streamy ones, uh, I, I wanted to kind of wear at least something semi-nice, and, you know, I do most of my shopping at either Target or, like, Goodwill, so I went to, like, a Banana Republic, because I heard that men's clothing was there, and I went in there, and, like, I've never, I've never bought a pair of shoes for myself, Eddie, that was more than $20, ever in my entire life. I've had sh- shoes given to me sometimes as gifts. Mm-hmm. I will wear those. But I walked into the Banana Republic and I, I asked the woman, I was like, what are some of your like cheaper like slip-on loafers? And I bought like a pair of brown, like nice leather shoes and they were like $90. And I remember like, I'm, I mean, I'm going to be 25 this summer. And I was like, oh, I can't, I don't know. <laughs> that, that's and one I of those felt things, terrible about buying them. The thing is though, yeah, that's one of those things where it's like, you gotta, and this is something I've, I've been deciding recently. It's the same thing of like, as an adult, you got to get one nice dress up thing so you don't yeah. have to feel guilty about it because that's not you're doing just fine. <laughs> yeah, I walked out of there with a, a clearance rack uh, coat that was too small and the shoes and as like the bill was like 180 bucks and I was just like, what? I have fallen off the wagon. Man. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? So I'm glad that I feel like that, though, because it saves me money. But also, yeah. it's like, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll probably have those shoes for 10 years now, at least, if I treat them well. I but. just think the worst fear, especially, uh, is, I, like, with us, I think that'll never go away because it is just the thing. of, And I think with most 
people that listen to our stuff, no matter like what job you have or whatever, just because like, I don't know, that's what being a normal person is. You know what I mean? Like realizing yeah. like, Ooh, that's, that's a lot of money. You know what I mean? And exactly. if you don't have yeah. that, it's the people that are like in LA being like, Oh, you don't have the new Range Rover. Wow. And it's like, like who fucking die. cares? It's like, that's not Can real you- life. That just isn't. It, it is not. It's like you're not fucking happy. You're just you're doing it for other people's sake. You're not doing it for your own thing. Like you personally, if if nobody else's opinion mattered, you wouldn't go out and buy a fucking Lamborghini. Who gives a fuck? You know? Yeah, unless you you're an enthusiast that with that stuff. But again, if it's a status thing, yeah. I just think that's a wash. Um, you know what I remembered about those shoes, by the way? The day I got them was the day that I wore them for the first time, and we were at uh, this little event afterwards. And Link Neal came up, like Rhett and Link, and Sabrina was standing next to me, and, and like I think he like startled Sabrina or something, and she spilled champagne all over my new oh, shoes. Oh man! <laughs> so that they're fucked up right away, boys. But that's okay. Um, dude, did you see ever see that clip of uh that rich dude like screaming at that homeless dude? Uh, like, in, uh, what's the fucking setting for it? It's like in front of like a fountain or something. Uh, no. Hold dude, up, what one is sec, that? one sec. Let me pull it up. All right, here. Oh, you suck! I got a mansion made in diamonds. Minecraft game was fine. Paper non fighting. So go and get the I'm out. Mine some diamonds. M- m- mine them for me. Is it me? I never know what he says here. You can keep her in a cavern. Fight him with my arms. Faze me. Diamonds in my E chest. Yo, uh, the, 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 the diamonds if you want them, girl. The diamonds if you want them. Take my diamonds if you want them, girl. Jump in the Minecraft cart. Girl, let's put some diamonds on it. Any ore you want, baby. Just to put some armor on you. You deserve it, baby. You deserve it. Oh! 